Hello again everyone and welcome back to my channel. In the studio today I have the one, the only, the System76 Lemur Pro laptop right here, ready to be reviewed, and that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video. After spending about a week with this machine, I finally feel like I'm ready to give you guys my thoughts and my opinions. Now if you are a supporter of my Patreon page, then you've already seen this video because Whenever possible, I make as many videos as I can available early to my patrons as early access videos of which this was one. So thank you so much to all of my supporters, all of my patrons that went onto my Patreon page and decided to support my content. I really appreciate it. And I also want to send a special thank you out to System76 who was nice enough to provide this machine right here to me for review for the week so I can give you guys my review in the first place. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Now even though System76 provided this laptop for the review, the opinions in this video are all mine. They are not a sponsor. I do not owe them any particular opinion. I'm going to tell you guys what I like about this machine and what I don't like about this machine. And as usual, you will get a completely unbiased review. So let's go ahead and review the Lemur Pro. So here it is in all its glory, the System 76 Lemur. Well, not really. This is the lemur that I purchased about three or so years ago, and it's actually the very first laptop that I ever purchased from System76. And I was a little bit surprised when System76 decided to resurrect the lemur line. And here is the actual lemur pro, the new model that they just introduced. And as you could tell, it's quite a bit skinnier and lighter compared to the previous lemur models that they had available several years ago. So first of all, let me give you guys an overview of the actual hardware itself. Now when I took this thing out of the box, the first thing I noticed was that it was very, very light. And that was actually not what I was expecting because that means that this laptop is something of a unicorn because I would think to have longer battery life, you would need a bigger battery, and a bigger battery seems like it's going to make the laptop much heavier. But surprisingly, this is actually a lighter laptop than the Galago Pro, which is what I assume it replaces because the Galago Pro is actually not listed on the System76 website at all anymore. This looks like it's actually the laptop that's filling its space when it comes to a 14-inch laptop. So obviously that is going to make me need to compare this to the Galago Pro that it replaces. More on that later. But again, this is a very light laptop and definitely lighter than the Galago Pro, which had less battery life in my testing than this one. Now when it comes to ports, we actually have a barrel connector for the power cord, which is actually not what I was expecting because this laptop is able to charge over USB-C, so I just assumed that it would have a USB-C power adapter, but it actually comes with a power adapter that has a barrel connector, which is interesting to me. And speaking of the power cord, the power brick is extremely light, so even that's not going to add a lot of weight in the bag. But in addition to the connector for the power cord, we have a full-size HDMI port, a standard USB port, and then we also have a USB-C port as well. And if you look at the icons next to it, you'll notice that it actually has a display port symbol on there as well. Why? Well, because this laptop is able to carry display port over USB-C, which means that you will be able to attach this laptop to a USB-C dock and actually use it to attach your monitors, your keyboards, and your mouse, or whatever else you might have. But unfortunately, we only have one USB-C port, which is a bit of a letdown to me. I would have hoped to see at least two of those. When it comes to standard USB, we also have another USB port on the right-hand side as well, 
which is also where the power button is to turn on the laptop. And then in addition to that, we have a headphone jack, a place to attach a Kensington lock, and also a micro SD card slot as well, which is very useful to me because I program a lot of Raspberry Pis, and I'm sure that if I was to buy one of these, I would use that a lot. At first, I found it a little bit strange that we have a micro SD card slot instead of a full size SD card slot. But that probably doesn't matter because it seems like full-size SD cards are becoming more and more rare, especially considering that most micro SD cards come with an adapter. So it probably doesn't matter to most. Now let's take a look at the screen. I think that this machine has a great screen. I like this screen better than the display that was on the Galago Pro. It just seems brighter to me. Maybe it's my imagination. But the screen quality does appear to be better overall. It does seem to have a really big bezel on the bottom, but the bezel is really thin when you look at the top edges of it, so it's not something that I actually notice all that much. Now when it comes to the keyboard, I do like the keyboard on this machine. I didn't like it at first to be honest with you. I made a lot of mistakes while I was getting used to it, but that's just because I wasn't used to typing on this particular type of keyboard. It's more or less like the Mac OS keyboards before they went to the butterfly style keyboards. And it even seems to have a bit more key travel than a Mac OS keyboard would have. And now that I've had some time to spend with this keyboard, I do like it a little bit better overall than the Galago Pro keyboard, but I don't like it quite as much as the Gazelle keyboard or a ThinkPad keyboard. It's not that this keyboard is bad by any means, it's actually pretty good. But when it comes to Lenovo and even the System76 Gazelle, I just prefer the key travel on those a little bit more than this. But I don't feel like the keyboard is egregious at all. I would probably rate it at a 7 out of 10 to be completely honest. And overall the build quality feels really good. Now it's not going to be quite as good as say a ThinkPad which I think sets the standard when it comes to build quality. But it is solid and it is good. I would say it's right up there with the Galago Pro. It does feel a little bit lighter, which is weird. But even though it's a lighter laptop than the Galago Pro, it definitely feels sturdy and it doesn't give the impression that the laptop is cheaply made. And the reason why I keep on talking about how light this laptop is is because, you know, it's something that I still haven't gotten used to yet because sometimes I feel like this is just feather light and. That's actually a good thing because if I was traveling with this machine, then, you know, I don't feel like it's going to add virtually any weight in my bag at all. I think this might actually be the perfect laptop for people that travel. Now, there's a few downsides to get out of the way when it comes to the build. Now, a lot of people enjoyed the physical Ethernet jack on the Galago Pro, which is completely absent here. Now, I'm going to cautiously say that this doesn't really bother me because having to plug in a dongle for something is not something that really bothers me because, let's face it, an Ethernet dongle for USB basically doesn't add any additional weight in my bag, and it's not that inconvenient to plug it in. But I get it. Most people especially people within my audience, really do prefer a physical Ethernet jack. The Galago Pro had that, and this machine replaces the Galago Pro, so some people might feel like that is a downside in this new model. Now, while we're on the subject of ports, I do feel that I need to let you guys know that there is no Thunderbolt on this machine. Yes, it does have a USB-C port, but it doesn't carry Thunderbolt over that port, so... If you want to, for example, buy some Thunderbolt devices, you're out of luck. They're not going to work. And I don't personally feel like any laptop should ship in 2020 without Thunderbolt. I think that that's basically a requirement. I mean, just think about it for a minute. This laptop has integrated Intel graphics, which I understand are decent, but you're not going to be able to plug in a GPU dock, like a Thunderbolt GPU dock, and have this laptop double as a gaming machine when you're at your desk. But if you could do that, how awesome would it be to have a lightweight laptop like this with awesome battery life and have it double as your gaming machine? I mean, I just dream 
of the day where I will have one machine that'll be my gaming machine, my work machine, and be everything. But without Thunderbolt, it can't be that to me. But that might not matter to you, though, because maybe you don't plan on buying Thunderbolt devices, and that's not something that you feel is a factor. But I just want to make you guys aware of the fact that you will not be able to use Thunderbolt devices on this machine. Now, another thing that I get asked about constantly when I review laptops is how loud is the fan? And I get it. Fan noise is something that can really irritate me as well. I certainly don't like hearing the fan while I'm trying to get work done. And so far with my time on this machine, I've barely heard the fan at all. It's really, really rare. The only times the fan has come on for me is when I was running a really intensive Ansible job in fact, when I first set this laptop up, I did what I do on all of my machines. And I basically run my bootstrap script, which allows me to basically pull down a script on a local web server that runs Ansible jobs that provision all of my machines and even my servers. And obviously a script like that is doing a lot of work. So that did make the fan come on. And when I installed the firmware updates, more on that later, Actually, I heard the fan for that as well, but that's typical when you install firmware updates. But honestly, I rarely ever hear the fan. It's almost completely silent. In fact, this might be the most silent machine that I've had in my studio, which is pretty surprising. Now, I just mentioned firmware updates, and when I first unboxed this laptop, that was the first thing that I was actually prompted for. And then I went ahead and, well, installed the firmware updates because I wanted to be completely up to date. Now, I would have preferred to record that footage directly off the laptop itself, but my screen recorder is unable to be activated until after the boot process. And typically the reason for that is because the screen recorder is technically a second display and it's not going to support a different display until after it boots, which is actually kind of normal. A lot of laptops are like that. But with most laptops, you can go ahead and go into the BIOS and you can basically set the external displays as primary when they are connected. But here we have core boot, which is a good thing and a bad thing. The good thing is we have open source BIOS. How awesome is that? That's great. And that makes me feel like I'm living in an, another alternate future where we have things like open source BIOS. But the downside is, as far as I've been able to tell, there are no actual BIOS settings as well. To make the boot process faster, the System76 implementation of Core Boot is actually going to go ahead and prioritize speed. So they're going to give you things that are a safe default and all the features that most people want to have enabled, like virtualization and things like that, those things are going to be turned on. But that also means that I don't have the ability to set the primary display to one of the ports to record things like that, but that's not going to be a factor for most of you. I mean, how many people out there are interested in recording footage off of the HDMI port of the BIOS screen of their computer? But I just thought I would go ahead and mention that. Now here I have the screen recorder hooked up to the laptop, and this is actually showing you guys the actual screen of the machine itself. And you can notice a few things here. If you've used Pop! OS in the past, and this shipped with Pop! OS 2004, you can tell that this is not the standard wallpaper. I've made myself at home on this machine. And you could also see, if you look up here, I'm not plugged into power. I have 46% of the battery remaining. Now the time is now 3.12 p.m. and I started using this laptop at around 8 o'clock this morning, no later than 8.30. And I have not had it plugged in at all the entire day. In fact, I've used this computer to assist me with the recording of another video that I just finished. So I've been actually doing some work. You can see here I have eight workspaces. And if I click here, it's still estimating that I have about four hours remaining. Now, if you know me, then you know that I hate sacrificing things. So I have not lowered the screen brightness or made any sacrifices at all because I don't really care to. 
I want the screen to be at a level that is completely comfortable to me, and even if that means that the battery life could be lower, then so be it. But I would probably get even more battery life if I did start to lower the screen brightness and things like that. But I still think four hours remaining, and here we are, you know, most of the day is over with as far as the workday, that's actually pretty good. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if this laptop lasts me the remainder of the workday with still a few hours left to go, the battery life is that good. I would say it's very reasonable to expect eight hours of battery life with this laptop, but much more depending on what types of things you're doing. Maybe you're just doing standard web browsing or just coding in a text editor. If you lower the screen brightness and things like that, you might be able to save even more battery life. But even with the screen brightness turned all the way up, it's gonna last me the whole day, which is actually pretty cool. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and pull up the settings. And let's just take a look at a few things here. So if I scroll down, I have the about section and we can get a look at what specs this review unit shipped to me with. Now, first of all, we have a Core i7-10510U processor that runs at 1.8 gigahertz and according to this, it's saying that we have eight cores. Actually, it has four cores, but with hyper-threading, it's actually going to show up as eight. So if I bring up the system monitor, you can see that right here. You can see the eight cores. Again, that's with hyper-threading. And even though it's only 1.8 gigahertz, which I guess is actually fairly standard nowadays, it's able to turbo up to 4.9 gigahertz, so this particular CPU is actually pretty good. The memory has been maxed out. Again, this machine supports up to 40 gigabytes of RAM, and of course some memory is going to be reserved, as you can see here. But 40 gigabytes of RAM I think is good for most people. Again, if you want something like 64 gigs of RAM, you might have to go with a different model. Now if we check out the disk that it shipped with, this one is the 970 EVO Plus. This is an NVMe hard drive, so this is actually going to be quite fast. In fact, boot time is actually really, really fast on this machine. In fact, it's actually going to get a little bit faster, believe it or not, because as of the time I'm recording this video, it's expected that a patch is going to be released by System76 that is going to do something with the uh, speed curves or whatever you want to call it and it's going to make it run a little bit more aggressive if you have it on high performance mode to basically make sure that you are able to squeeze as much speed out of this laptop as you can. But as of the time that I'm recording this video, that patch isn't out yet, but it's plenty fast for me, so I think it's pretty great. And you know what? This laptop is definitely no slouch at all. So if I just randomly bring up some applications, bring up Pop Shop, that was pretty much instantaneous. But to be fair, that could have been running in the background. So if I look at all the other apps here, and a lot of these are going to be apps that I installed. I did make myself at home on here after all. So if I was to randomly just pick some applications here, you can see that they all open pretty quickly. We can see that LibreOffice took a little bit longer to load than other apps. But honestly, that was probably not a good example because this is not the Pop! OS LibreOffice. This is actually the app image version, which is not what it ships with. So it's going to be a little bit slower, but that was still pretty good. The overall responsiveness of the laptop itself is really good. I'm really impressed with this machine. I like it quite a bit. And for those of you that are curious, let me go ahead and clear up some room on the screen here. I bring up a terminal. You could check out some of the uh, more geekier things about the machine, like for example, the slash proc CPU info output for those of you that are curious. I'll scroll up a bit here. And again, we see the processor right here. And again, we have the 10510U processor. We can get some of the information that I've already talked about. We get the cache size, for example, the number of siblings or cores, basically. Um, this is with hyper-threading. We have four cores as it shows right here. Then if I bring up something like HTOP, I love this application here. 
we can see that, you know, it's idling pretty low, but I do have quite a bit of things running here. So this is nowhere near going to be equivalent to running vanilla or anything like that. We can see that I have a lot of Firefox tabs open, for example. And we're using about four gigs of the 40 gigabytes of RAM. So that's not too bad. And the fan is not on at all. So that's pretty cool. And if you're curious, I could just do sensors. We can see what the temperature is right now with all of that running in the background there. So I would say we probably average about 50 or 52 Celsius for the temperature of the CPU at this time. If you're curious, the LSPCI output is this right here. If you guys want to Google any of these components to search for the compatibility of your preferred Linux distribution, if yours is not Pop! OS. For the wireless card, for example, we have the Intel 9462 card. And this laptop, if you order the right card, actually supports Wi-Fi 6, which is actually really cool, although honestly, I haven't had a chance to try out Wi-Fi 6 just yet. So I don't actually have an opinion on that yet, but hopefully I'll get a chance to in the short term future. So maybe that output was helpful. So again, go ahead and research any of those components if you'd like. So I'm sure a lot of you guys wanna know how the sound quality is on this machine when it comes to the integrated sound card and the integrated speakers. And here what I'm gonna do is basically play a video from my YouTube channel. I'd much rather play something like Metallica or something awesome, but you know how copyright strikes go. But I'll go ahead and play a video from my channel just so you guys can get a general idea. Now obviously, the sound coming out of the speakers and then being captured by the microphone is not going to be indicative of how it sounds in real life. So before I play a video, I'll just tell you that the sound quality isn't amazing, but I didn't expect it to be because none of the laptops that I've ever purchased personally have ever had what I call good sound coming from the internal speakers, leading me to believe that laptops generally have bad sound. If you guys have used a laptop and it had good sound, let me know in the comments below. I'm curious if that kind of laptop actually exists because in my experience, audio quality on laptops generally sounds bad and I end up using something like a set of Bluetooth headphones or something like that. I'll go ahead and play this one right here for Raspberry Pi. Hello again, everyone. Today in the studio, I have the new 8 gig Raspberry Pi 4, and I'm really excited to check this out because I've been waiting for the day that there's an 8 gig version of the Pi, and now that's a reality because here it is. Now, as you can no doubt hear, there was a bit of vibration in that particular scene. And I had the audio all the way up to max just because I wanted you guys to hear that. If I don't have the audio all the way up to max, maybe just a, a couple notches to the left, it sounds fine. I just listened to a Lacuna Coil music video just a few minutes ago to test it again. And it actually sounds decent, but again, a 6 or a 7 out of 10. And then when you crank the volume, you are going to have a little bit of vibration in the chassis. Just keep that in mind. But I think that, again, this machine is right up there with all the other laptops that I've reviewed. But if sound quality is an important feature for you, then the sound quality could be a concern if you were to go with this machine. So at this point, I'm going to give you guys my final thoughts on the Lemur Pro laptop from System76. It's been a lot of fun to check this out. It's also been somewhat of a challenge to review this laptop. In fact, it's probably the most challenging laptop review that I've ever had to do because this is a completely different direction for the ultra portable slot in the System76 lineup. And this machine is somewhat of a unicorn as well. It just feels like a laptop that shouldn't technically be able to exist in its current form, but you know, here it is. Now what I mean when I say unicorn is that it just feels like this machine being as light as it is can't possibly have the battery life that it does. And it's feather light. This is probably the lightest laptop I've ever reviewed. I don't know if this is the lightest laptop in existence, probably not, but it is the lightest laptop that I've ever used. 
and still it has crazy battery life. I mean, it lasts a long time. I have had this machine on two occasions at least, last an entire workday, and still have battery left the next day when I open it up and continue working on it, which is not something that I've ever experienced with a laptop before. Now, if you guys are looking for a laptop that is focused on battery life, there's no question this is the one to get. On at least two occasions, the battery lasted the entire workday for me and still had plenty left for at least part of the next day. I've never used a laptop that was ever able to last quite that long. So that's amazing. Now, of course, that is subjective. If you are, you know, compiling Linux kernels all day long, then yeah, it's probably not going to last that long. I don't think any laptop can withstand something like that. So depending on what you use yours for, it'll probably differ a bit, but the battery is the longest lasting on this machine than any I have ever reviewed in the past. And like I mentioned, it's feather light. So if you travel, then you definitely want this machine because when you travel, battery life and portability are very important. And this checks both boxes. And we're not sacrificing performance here. This is not an Atom processor. This is not an ARM processor. We don't have a Raspberry Pi Zero in here, although at some points I kind of thought maybe we do because of how light it is. But the performance is great. It keeps up with me. It never slowed down a single time as I was using it. So I have no complaints about performance either. And it's also silent for the most part. If I'm doing something crazy, like I was running an Ansible job on it, the fan kicked on. But I think I've heard the fan literally two times the entire week that I've had this machine. And I would say that this is the quietest laptop that I've ever reviewed as well. Now there are a few downsides though. I mentioned in the video that I was going to give you an unbiased review, and I always do, and I am, of course, going to do the same in this video as well. And one of the things that is the most um, striking to me is that this machine replaces the Galago Pro in the ultra-portable slot in their lineup, and there are a few downsides when you compare it to the Galago Pro. For example, the Galago Pro was able to be configured with up to 64 gigs of RAM, but this machine tops out at 40, which to me is kind of weird. You would think you would want the successor to a laptop like the Galago Pro to at least be able to have RAM that can go up as high as that one did, but 40 gigs is the limit on this machine. Now another downside, like I've mentioned earlier in the video, is the lack of Thunderbolt support. In my opinion, no laptop in 2020 should ship without Thunderbolt support. For me, that means that I am not able to plug in a Thunderbolt GPU dock to have this machine double as a gaming machine when it's docked at my desk. And docking is one of the concerns here. It's one of the focuses of this machine. Portability is one, sure, but System76 also advertises this to be a dockable laptop, and it is. But GPU docks are out of the equation because of the absence of Thunderbolt. Now, some people might think that the absence of Thunderbolt is a good thing because there are some legitimate concerns about security when it comes to Thunderbolt. It does actually open the door to some vulnerabilities. Now, I don't think that eliminating Thunderbolt is quite the answer to that security concern because if you don't use that with a laptop that has Thunderbolt, then you can simply go in the BIOS and turn that off or go in the settings and turn that off. So I don't really feel like that is a good reason to omit Thunderbolt support. Now I'm not saying that that is the reason why System76 omitted it. I bet it's probably because that they wanted to focus on battery life and perhaps if they did include Thunderbolt, then they may have needed to uh, sacrifice some kind of battery life. So I totally understand that. Just keep that in mind if you wanna go with this machine that you will need to understand that it doesn't have Thunderbolt support and make a decision on whether or not that matters to you. Another downside, like I mentioned earlier in the video, is the audio quality. It's a bit tinny when you have it cranked all the way up. So I know a lot of you guys are always asking me about audio quality when I do reviews, and I'm not really the best person to ask about that because I'm not an audiophile, and I've never been impressed by the audio in any laptop that I've ever reviewed when it comes to the internal speakers. 
But I would say that this is probably a 6 out of 10, 7 out of 10 when it comes to the built-in speakers. They're okay. They're not really that great. But that doesn't matter to me because I'm just going to use headphones anyway. That's just how I do it. Again, I've never been impressed by audio or the speakers on a laptop ever. So that's just the direction that I'm going to go. That's not a factor for me. Also, I really do like the keyboard. At first, I really didn't, to be honest. I, I had some trouble typing on it. It took a few hours for me to get used to the keyboard. Once I did get used to the keyboard, I found that I liked it quite a bit. It reminds me of the MacBook keyboard before they switched to their new technology that everybody hates that basically keeps failing. It doesn't feel quite like that, but it feels like the laptops they had before that. And it feels decent. It has more key travel than the newest MacBook Pros, or at least the ones with the butterfly switches. It has more key travel than those. But when it comes to how good of a keyboard it is, it's decent. It's not going to measure up to a, you know, a Lenovo keyboard, which I think is probably number one to me. But I also like the keyboard on the new Gazelle as well, which I've also reviewed. And that could even be my favorite keyboard. It's kind of neck and neck. I think Lenovo is still number one. So that means this laptop would come in at about number three. But third place in terms of quality of keyboard is not a bad place to be because that already makes it better than Dell and other manufacturers that are not basically Lenovo. So that's, you know, pretty decent. So this machine, like I mentioned, was provided by System76, and I really appreciate that. Surprisingly, during the course of this review, I decided to purchase my own. So I actually have it right over there in the box, a brand new Lemur Pro that's actually mine. And I'm going to be replacing my Galago Pro with the Lemur Pro. So why would I be replacing the Galago Pro with this one if there are some downsides? Well, I decided that the downsides don't really affect me personally. Now, I really wanted a laptop that I could dock to a GPU dock to have it double as a gaming machine when I'm at my desk. But since I have the Gazelle laptop, that one has a great built-in GPU, so that's no longer a concern for me personally. I can look the other way on that since that need is met by the Gazelle. Now, I also mentioned that the Galago Pro tops out at 64 gigs of RAM, whereas this one tops out at 40. 32 gigs is my minimum. A laptop or desktop has to have at least that for me to use it nowadays. So this machine topping out at 40 gigs is fine. I could be okay with that. And I really love the portability and the battery life. And the screen is an upgrade from the Galago Pro. So that's another benefit as well. But I could tell you this, if it's time for another refresh, which could be the case in like, who knows, 2022 or something like that, I'm not going to consider a laptop without Thunderbolt. And I would certainly hope by then any issues with Thunderbolt GPU support is going to be resolved. And maybe then I will have one machine that's going to double as my gaming machine and work machine. But until then, I'm going to enjoy my time with the Lemur Pro. Although there are a few downsides, they don't impact me personally. So I'm actually excited to have one for it myself. So there you go. That was my review. And I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it answered all of your questions. But if there's any questions that you guys have, go ahead and leave those in the comments below this video. If there are enough comments or questions to justify a video, I will consider doing a follow-up in the future since this machine isn't going to be going anywhere since I now have my own. So again, I hope that was helpful. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. <music>